Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Peter. Um, I'm a virtual visualization engineer at Intel, and uh, today I will be uh, co-presenting this uh, two top on two topics uh, on uh, TD partitioning. Um, I believe um, this is probably one of the first times that we've actually presented this technology at, at a Linux conference, so we're very excited. Uh, thanks for allowing us to join uh, remotely. Uh, so uh, for the sake of time, uh, we probably won't be able to get into a lot of details. Uh, so I'm just going to be covering the basics of TD partitioning. Um, and uh, later on, uh, Jaywin is going to talk about uh, VTPM based on this technology. So um, because we don't have lots of time, uh, I'm going to just presume that uh, the audience has some basic knowledge of TDX as well as SVSM. Uh, so, uh, so we won't be going into a lot of details uh, in those areas. But uh, we do have developers on the uh, in the chat room and uh, feel free to ask us questions later or shoot us an email. Um, so uh, we're going to talk about TD partitioning. Um, this is a very complicated diagram. We'll be focusing on the red box. So uh, on the left, uh, what you can see is uh, our traditional VMX guests, um, and we won't really be touching on those uh, today. Uh, the middle one is TDX. So I think probably most of the audience uh, would be more familiar with the, this middle box, which is what we usually call a TDX guest, uh, which is a guest that is a uh, that runs in scene mode. Um, I would say that TD partitioning uh, is built on top of the TDX technology. It reuses um, a lot of the stuff that that's already in place uh, by TDX. Um, of course, uh, there are pros and cons to using this new architecture. It is a little bit similar to nested uh, virtualization, which, which we will do a comparison later on in the later slide. Um, so on the, on the right in the red box, what this means is uh, we have in the green box is a traditional TD, TD guest, and uh, we will refer to that as L1 VMN. And uh, on top of L1 VMN, we can now launch L2 VMs, and those VMs, we call them uh, TD partitioning VMs. And I think uh, this architecture, for example, can be mapped very nicely to Microsoft's VSM architecture, which has like several um, virtual trust levels. Um, and, and what this does is it allows us to have VM encapsulation inside the, the, a TD guest. So we have additional protection on top of that. And we will be talking about what it looks like uh, in TD partitioning. And by the way, uh, we have included uh, references. Uh, the spec has been released. Uh, there, there are now like activities like in the KVM community, but not a lot. So this is uh, this is very early, uh, and we're excited to be talking about this. So, so uh, when we introduce TDX, um, basically we introduce a new mode called Scene Mode, and uh, it reuses technologies like. Uh, MKTME, it encrypts uh, memory pages, so we have shared pages and private pages and so on. And uh, when it comes to TD partitioning, I think the best way to, to kind of visualize it is to kind of think of a nested guest, even though there are differences. So when, when we're running in the L2 guest, um, so, so as you can see, when the vCPU is in TD mode, it can run in either L1 or L2 mode. So, but, but for, for today, we're going to be focusing on L2. So for L1, it's mostly just like a TD guest. Um, for L2, this is what's new. And this is a simplified diagram. In the spec, this is a lot more complex, uh, but for the sake of time, we're going to try to speed up. Um, when, so because we have scene mode and we have the TDX module, the L2 exit flow is a, a bit more complex uh, than the traditional VMX guest. So I think we can cat categorize uh, L2 VM exits into three kinds of exits. Uh, and while well, we try to use colors to kind of uh, help people understand what this means, um, we, have, we have exits. So 
So first of all, every exit will be caught by the TDX module, which is a software module running in scene mode. I think uh, it can be understood as um, like a hypervisor running in, in, in secure mode. And the, the TDX module always catches the VMXs from L2. And then uh, everything starts from that point. And that's why there's a black dot. Um, when L2 exits, uh, the easiest flow is like for sensitive critical operations, um, very few of them, the TDX module will, uh, will just take care of it. So it'll return to the guest or it'll inject an error or things like that. Um, the second one is uh, the green line, which is um, uh, what we call TD exits. So what that means is some of the exits have to be taken care of by host VMM. And this host VMM is the same as uh, the host v VMM we're talking about in, in, in TDX. Uh, it, is, it is not trusted, but it does provide us with like memory pages, which will be encrypted in the TDX mode. Um, and the third kind of, the, the red line is the new, the new type of exit that we've introduced in TD partitioning, which is called L, um, L2 to L1 exit. And uh, this is bidirectional, which just means, you know, if you can have an exit, you can have an entry. So if you have L1, L2 to L1 exit, you can have L1 to L2 entry. And, uh, and you know, it's, just, it's the same for, for the green line for TD exit. Um, so uh, depending on the type of exit and different conditions, uh, uh, they will be handled differently. Uh, I do apologize, we probably won't have time to go into all the details, but you can imagine um, the majority of the exits will be taken care of by the L1 VMM. And that's why uh, we have this technology is that we introduce L1 VMM, uh, which is trusted uh, to handle these exits uh, generated in L2. So when we virtualize L2 interrupts, uh, we, we didn't really introduce anything new. So uh, we decided to use uh, APIC-V. So X2 APIC mode just directly uses APIC-V in hardware. What that means is if your L2 guest uh, turns on uh, X2 APIC mode, it can directly take advantage of uh, APIC-V uh, in the hardware, which is fast. If you know, but if it launches in like legacy mode, it uses XAPIC mode, uh, we can also emulate that. And that is the power of the L1 VMM that we introduced and is trusted. Uh, right now, we don't have advanced technologies like post interrupts for L2 VMs. Uh, that, that is still in discussion, um, but uh, it's the same, but for L1, it's the same as uh, TDX. Uh, we use uh, post interrupts for L1. And uh, for memory virtualization, uh, this is a, the interesting part. Um, in TDX, we introduce private memory, uh, which is the opposite of shared, which means memory is encrypted. Um, in L2, we also have private memory. And uh, because this is more like a nested architecture, in order for us to simplify L2 memory management, um, we created this, uh, this uh, concept called uh, page aliasing. And what that means is uh, there's actually, you know, under the hood, there's actually nothing super new about this. What this means is we've, we have simplified the GPA space for each VM. And uh, so in TDP, uh, all VMs share the same uh, GPA space. So what that means is say your L1 VMM, so L1 VMM is VM zero, but let's say L1 VMM has this GPA called X um, and it is going to be the same X in, L, in VM one, VM two and VM three. And what this means is um, we don't create separate uh, L2 to, to L1 GPA mappings. They're all the same. And so you can imagine when we're implementing uh, the L2 VMs, they have to be smart enough to not bump into each other. So they, because they have to share this GPA space. 
even though they share the mappings, um, they, their secure EPTs are separately managed so that they, they, they won't be able to actually touch each, each other's memory if, if managed correctly. Um, they have their own EPT uh, page, uh, page table. And what that means is um, they, they have their, their own memory for them to access. Um, so, so this is the tricky part. And uh, this is done through a TDG call, which is documented in our spec. And uh, what this call is able to do is to set different permissions um, for each page. So for example, uh, usually we allow the L zero to have the, the most uh, access to these guest pages, to these uh, private pages. Um, so usually L1 VMM, since it is trusted, it is usually able to, to touch um, L2 VM's uh, memory, uh, memory pages. But uh, L1 VMM is able to configure those pages for, for example, for VM1, we'll we can configure page A as read-only and others can be rewrite, others can be RWX and so on and so forth. And there could be none, which just means this guest is not allowed to access this memory. So this does give us a lot of simplification as well as restrictions. For right now, uh, we have not actually implemented VM2 or 3, so we just have one VM sharing the GPA space with VM0, so that, that made it a little bit easier. But if we want to, say, like implement a TVM, then we will have to start thinking about these problems. Uh, and we also encountered these problems in SVSM uh, when, it, when it came to like where we place the, uh, the SVSM uh, paravisor and stuff like that, and how we boot. Uh, these are all challenges. And uh, we, we won't be talking about uh, shared memory. It is, but I can say uh, it is basically the same as in TDX. So there's a shared bit, uh, there's a shared EPT. Uh, it's basically the same. Uh, we didn't really add, add anything new to that. And, and page conversion is the same as well. So uh, I think we're about to, uh, to run out of time. Um, so I've, I'm just trying to put the flow, uh, put everything into this one slide. This is like one very typical case for TD partitioning. So let's say L2 runs and it hits uh, a PT violation. So, so it's a fault. All right, I see that, thank you. Um, so it's a fault and uh, it traps into TDX module. TDX module is going to realize that it has the L1 mapping, but not L2. L, it goes into L2. L2 then issues the TD call and it'll, it'll build the L2 uh, alias, basically. Um, I'm gonna speed up a little bit. Uh, the fault uh, will again trap into host VMN to create the non-leaf non uh, mappings. And then uh, L1 can create a uh, the leaf mappings, which basically mean, uh, means that we can uh, set the uh, permission bits. Uh, yeah, sorry, I can't, I can't, I don't have, I'm running out of time. So uh, this is, this came from our spec. So in, in our spec, uh, we have a lot of descriptions um, uh, for this uh, diagram. Uh, so I encourage people to, uh, to go to the spec and take a look or, at, or ask us questions. Right, so, so for the very last part, I'm just gonna speed, uh, speed up here. If we compare L2 to L1, I would say the most significant difference is L2 is a lot easier uh, uh, to enlighten. We don't even need to enlighten it because it, is, it looks very much like a VMX guest. Um, yeah, it is possible technically to run a completely unmodified TB guest, which means no enlightenment and um, but there will be performance hit. Uh, and then you can lighten things like uh, share pages or V handlers, uh, that's, that, that can be added on top of that. Uh, when it comes to nested, uh, the, the, the difference is we use two hypervisors to manage the guest because we have a scene mode hypervisor and a non scene mode hypervisor. I think that's the most significant uh, uh, difference. And all the X's, even though they're named differently, are very similar to TD, uh, the VMX exit. Uh, and uh, 
Yeah, I don't think I could talk. So I'm going to try to hand over to J1 to see if we can at least talk a little bit about uh, VTPM. Uh, J1, are you able to um, unmute? Uh, yes. Yes, yes, I can. Okay. Cool. Uh, so in this part, we I will give a brief introduction for the TD partitioning based VTPM. Uh, so here is a high level picture uh, that the L1 we have L1 VMM and we have a VTPM service implemented inside of the L1 VMM. And this VTPM service will emulate a hardware TPM and provide support for the L2. Yeah, and this picture shows the launch flow. In step one, the VMM will launch the L1 coconut SVSM. And the, inside of the L1, that the VTM service will initialize the TPM non-volatile memory and generate the TPM EK and uh, do and generate the EK certificate. Uh, at that moment, the the, the VTM service will also do a TD, TD, TD quote, uh, get a, embed the TD quote into the EK certificate as a special OID, and that will be used in the final attest, attestation phase. And in step three, the L1 will launch L2. At that moment, the VTPM service will measure uh, some initial information to the TPM PCR, such as the initial TDVF, TD X virtual firmware value, uh, value and the SVSM version. And finally, when the system is launched to L2, the L2 can communicate with the L1 via some uh, TPM spec, the uh, TCG spec defined and a private MMIO interface. Uh, that step is the key difference between current hour implementation and, and the SCV implementation. In SCV, they use a, a VTPM protocol, uh, but we hope to use the original TCG defined private MMIO space to keep the guest driver un, unchanged. Uh, since this is a, we don't have too much time, I will jump to the last one to talk about a testation story. Javin, I think the time is up. Sure. So, uh, maybe one or two sentences to the attestation, okay. and then we wrap it up. Oh, uh, okay, okay, sure. So, so in the attestation phase, we call it combined attestation. Uh, you may see the orange part and the, the yellow part. For the yellow part is to, to allow the third party to verify if the VTPM itself is a genius VTPM uh, implementing in coconut SVSM. Uh, and in the orange part, it allows the third party to verify if the L2 guest is a genius L2 guest. It's used a standard TPM attestation flow. So you may see that the, for, our intention is that for L2 guest, we just use a standard TPM one. You don't need to change the existing flow. But for the L1, uh, how we identify the VTPM, we need some modification to the original things. The, the original flow is just to verify the TPM EK. And here we, we, we still verify the TPM EK, but since the EK includes the TD, TD code. We, we verify EK by verifying the TD code value. We call it a TDX attestation based the EK verification. And the last thing is that uh, we provide the document and the prototype uh, here. Uh, so if you have interest, uh, feel free to read and uh, submit any question to us. Thank you very much.